Spiritual Teaching 250 Love Each Other 1. What spirit, hearing me speak of the land of promise, does not feel the desire to inhabit it? The purpose of my communication between you is to help your spirit to reach the abode of light and eternal peace, from where the greatness of your Creator is perceived. A path has been traced for you since all time, so that through it you arrive at the gates of that eternity, of that life that awaits your spirit. 2. I have forgiven you and lightened your burden of restitution so that you can hasten your step, wash away your guilt and you feel comfortable to start the walk again. Great is the mission and the struggle that you have on earth, but is greater in these times of wars and calamities, in which you must learn to pray with such elevation that through your invisible and intangible spirit to others, I manage to stop the advance of the war and spread the mantle of my peace over the peoples. 3. This nation where you dwell is not the new Jerusalem because that city awaits you spiritually, but has been chosen for my manifestation at this time and it will be like a door that will lead you to the white city, which in its ecstasy my apostle John beheld. 4. Foreigners will enter your city and you will see them as brothers in spirit, without despising them for being of other races. 5. Raise your thoughts for a few moments and I will make the rumor of war, the lament of the men, the pain of mothers, the crying of children, so that you understand your mission and get up to fulfill it. This is the time of justice in which you are seeing how the rich miser and the powerful and selfish nation are taken away from them the power, as well as the one who has taken what is foreign without the permission of its owner to increase its flow. The day has also come to see how other hands take away what he had no right. 6. You, in your material poverty, think that you are exempt from my justice, but I tell you that you are wrong, because you can also become rich misers of the spiritual wealth that I am giving you. 7. Today I have invited you to raise your thinking, so that you try to feel the pain that afflicts nations and I have contemplated that you still do not know how to feel the pain of your brothers, even when that pain is saturated in the air that you breathe. Will it be necessary for you to go through that test and drain that chalice, so that you can understand the pain that overwhelms humanity? Your heart is still hardened and the crystalline water of love does not flow from it. 8. Blessed is he who rises up to serve his brothers, because he has seen the calamities that afflict them. I will do it, rest in my bosom after finishing its work. Remember that when life has smiled on you, you have seen with indifference to those who suffer, and others, having known misery and having reached splendor, instead of helping those who knock on their doors, reject them from their presence and tell them, go your way, suffer and fight, as I did, and then you will have what I achieved with so much work. 9. My doctrine teaches you that the peace that your heart enjoys in the light of your spirit, you have reached through great trials or sufferings. And I tell you to distribute those jewels among your brothers without trying to know if they have made merits to possess them. 10. My word has done to you the same as when Lazarus was raised. A breath of death had penetrated your heart, destroying all hope you had harbored to survive this war that threatens your peace at every moment. But at the same time that the rumors of the war, you have heard that the voice of the Master is being heard in the bosom of a congregation of hearts simple and humble, and without wondering more about if it would be true, if such a miracle would be possible, you have come to seek me because you know that I am peace. 11. Hearing this voice, all the fibers of your spirit were moved and you exclaimed, It is you, my Lord, who speaks. However, your faith has not yet become absolute, because being with me you still continue to fear, as those disciples who were sailing with me in a boat, seeing that the waves of the sea were rough, shouted, Lord, Lord, save us we perish. 12. Why are you afraid? O oh people, if you find yourself refugees under the protection of my mercy, why do you distrust my power? Do not thereby make your effort to come and listen to me be useless and sterile. Realize that many come to hear my word from faraway regions. Others have to overcome the skepticism of their family. Others I see forced to abandon their material labors and their world duties and that sacrifice must not be sterile. 13. Consider that if instead of doubts and mistrust, you come to put all your faith in my word. She, by staying written with the fire of your love in your spirit, it will illuminate you at every moment and strengthen you in each of your tests. 14. 
Your spirit fears the chains of slavery because it already knows the taste of that cup of bitterness. 15. You love peace intensely, and it is that longing of your spirit that has brought me to you, O people, because you know that peace has been all concentrated in me. It would be in vain for you to look for it in the various human institutions, among men of power or among the most advanced theories of modern science, because that treasure has been lost by humanity. When man wants to regain that gift that he has discarded, he will inevitably have to look for it in me, as it happened with you. 16. Clear and within the reach of all my children is the lesson that I have come to give you, because I want to prepare you to be the emissaries of this good news, those who discover to humanity the best way to seek me to find peace. 17. Here you have fulfilled the word that I gave you when in the second era, Jesus thanked his Father for having hidden his wisdom from the wise and learned, instead he had given and revealed it to the humble. Yes, my people, because those you call wise, magnify themselves and want to humiliate the humble, teaching them only what they consider the crumbs of the bread that you have received from me. While the poor, the humble, who do know the needs that life presents and their privations, when they come to possess something, they feel that it is too much for them and they participate to others. Now I add that when the miser turns into generous and the proud into humble, they will instantly come to enjoy everything I have reserved for those who know how to practice virtue, because my love is not partial, it is universal, it is for all my children. Eighteen. All this you must know because if anyone wants to become wise in my doctrine, do not forget that to achieve it, before he has to be humble like Solomon whom I made king and wise to the degree that his name was famous and respected in the world of that time, which marveled at the wisdom of his advice and his judgments. But all its power, its light and splendor fell under the force of my justice, when it failed my orders. 19. People, fight and work for peace, as Israel conquered the promised land after so many vicissitudes and conflicts that she had to go through and conquer. I know that your spirit understands me well when I speak of Israel, because you carry that seed in your being and that story was written in your consciousness. 20. There is your experience, evolution and light, there is the open book in your spirit pointing out the law and preventing you from falling into error. I have made your spirit come to reincarnate at this time, far from ancient earthly possessions that would have materialized as has happened in other races and peoples, so that your only desire was to open a spiritual gap to humanity, show it where to direct its steps and lead it to the peace of my kingdom of justice and love. 21. Today you come in search of charity, and who can say that you have not received it? The sick have healed, the weary walkers have found peace, and the hungry and thirsty for spirituality have quenched their hunger and thirst. But still there are some who follow me who have not awakened, who doubt and ask for evidence to believe, I will grant what they need according to my will, but it is not the earthly possessions that I am going to give them, I have given to my children. The goods of the Spirit and from them I will give without limit to those who ask me with their works of charity and love towards their brothers. 22. I look for the Spirit that is part of my being, to teach and guide it, I want to elevate it and make it reach me, but not everyone recognizes me or knows how to receive me. The world and its innumerable trials have embittered your hearts and you do not have the strength to think about spiritual life and I say that now that the world has become hostile to you, you must seek more eagerly refuge in my infinite love. 23. My doctrine falls slowly on you like an incessant drop of crystalline water. It will lay the foundations of faith, of hope, of confidence for the work that I have entrusted to each spirit. 24. The elements are unleashed against man you should not fear, because you know that I have given you a power to overcome evil and protect your brothers. You can order those elements of destruction to stop and they will obey. If you keep praying and watching, you can do wonders and surprise the world. 25. Pray with clarity, make communion with my spirit, do not seek for it in a certain place. Pray under a tree, on a road, on the top of a mountain or in the corner of your bedroom and I will descend to converse with you, to enlighten you and to give you strength. 26. When you hear this word, open your heart and let its light enliven you, and afterwards, clean and prepared, go throughout the world spilling the testimony of what you have received. Many offer me their first fruits with joy, 
while others fearful hide their seed. They put all their effort and did not obtain the desired fruit. But I see his zeal, his love, and I say to them, Wait, persevere, and you will reap. 27. Watch that the bad seed does not prosper, that it does not germinate on the earth. Today, when the time is ripe for sowing, work and I will help you cultivate. 28. I have left your nation in the image of the second Jerusalem, soon your brothers from different races, and seeing her prodigal, their ambitions will be awakened and they will want to despoil you. I warn you and tell you, I have prepared it to offer peace to the spirits. I don't want to see you become lords and you slaves. I inspire in you love, justice, equity, so that you may live in peace. 29. Take advantage of the time and analyze my teaching because 1950 is approaching when I will stop speaking through this medium. So to correct you and take you step by step to perfection. 30. Mary watches over you and even though you do not look at her, you feel that her love and consolation spills into your being like a dew of grace. The sad have been full of hope. The sinners are purified and all of you have been blessed and anointed by her. Seek in the Divine Mother the consolation of your sorrows. Do you think I could deny your company and protection to her children when she is wanted with love? No, people. In her Divine Spirit you will only find love, tenderness and charity. 31. Women of the world, imitate Mary. Recall the time when she lived near you as a virtuous and selfless woman and mother, and you will feel filled with strength to fortify your spirit. 32. And you men who have been created in my likeness and who go through the path of trials, feeling the divine justice, fill yourselves with strength, use your gifts and rule your life with love and prudence. 33. To strengthen you I say to you, eat this bread and you will never die. Drink this crystal clear water and you will never be thirsty again. 34. In this age I have come to communicate with you in this way, to prepare your spirit for communication from spirit to spirit. I come to speak to you at length so that you get to know the divine essence of my word and not confuse you with other doctrines. 35. I have made you enter a path of regeneration so that you will not feel ashamed when you are in my presence and so that you feel worthy to listen to me. 36. I contemplate the most intimate part of your heart. I still discover what you are about to do. So do not be surprised that at times I correct you before you have missed. 37. Thus, when I formed the world and its destiny was to be a valley of atonement, I already knew that my children would have weaknesses and faults on their way, that a dwelling would be necessary for them to take the first step toward regeneration and improvement. 38. When the first human beings inhabited the earth, the Creator put His love in them and endowed them with spirit. He lit His light in consciousness, at the same time that they were given free will. 39. And while some struggled to persevere in good, fighting all temptations in order to remain clean and worthy of the Lord and according to their conscience, others, from sin to sin and from fault to fault, were forging a chain of sins, link by link, guided only by the voice of the senses, dominated by their passions, sowing error and temptation among his brothers. But beside these troubled spirits, my prophets have also come as messengers, angels of my divinity, to awaken humanity, to warn it, of the snares and to announce my arrival. 40. The spirits of darkness, crossing the spiritual path of humanity, confuse it, inducing it to idolatry, paganism, fanaticism. 41. My prophets, my envoys, my servants, have come to combat perversity and lies. They have come to suffer and die for his brothers, pointing with his index finger the path of truth, justice and love. 42. Seek the word of the prophets and in it you will see that they prepared you from that time and they spoke of facts that had to be fulfilled. See how Joel told you about these times of spiritual demonstrations. Realize that all the prophets have fought idolatry to teach the communication of spirit to spirit. 43. When Christ came into the world, humanity had already sinned a lot, the flood had already washed the face of the land. Sodom and Gomorrah had been consumed by fire and Babylon had been destroyed. He came to claim disobedience to his law and the blood of his prophets, 
and also had to be judged and killed by his own children. 44. The Word became man and took flesh from a virginal womb, spoke of humility, forgiveness, love and spiritual elevation, and was persecuted and judged. Being God, he was mocked and more. As a man he suffered and died. 45. Men who have managed to penetrate the mysteries of those revelations have discovered the truth and they bow to her today. 46. But at this time confusion arises again, and men full of pride in their false greatness try to banish from the human heart the name of Christ and his doctrine. Behold the darkness. Meanwhile, the Father, in fulfillment of Joel's prophecy, opens a new age and pours out his spirit on all flesh and on all spirit it allows listening. It makes itself felt and it allows itself to be contemplated, manifesting itself in many ways. 47. Nature opens his bosom and surprises the world and science by revealing secrets that have amazed man. They are voices that speak of a wisdom and a power that is above all human knowledge. The tombs guard the dead, but spirits escape and materialize to bear witness to the survival of the spirit. 48. The eyes of men, the same in the child, that in the young or the old, go through the material to delve into the hereafter and contemplate spiritual life. 49. Hear these clumsy and humble mouths tell you about divine teachings, and you will see that this manifestation is one of the largest of this time announced many centuries before. 50. Who has not had dreams that have been true prophecies and then have seen them come true? It is the time of light, of the awakening of the spirit that had become lethargic with science, marveling at the material discoveries. 51. Men have also called this time the time of light for its science. Look at them like birds crossing the heights. See them dominating the seas and land and how they have found light to illuminate the night. Every day they discover strength and elements to combine them and create new surprises for humanity. But that light has blinded them. Materialism and vanity have made them deaf to their voices of the heart and of the consciousness. 52. Today the light of the Holy Spirit descends to the world, so that men raise their faces and recognize that only one God exists and only one is His law in which all must unite, so that the works of humanity are great and worthy of the Creator. 53. Do not be confused, because before the sixth seal closes, great events will happen, that the stars will give great signs, the nations of the earth will groan and three parts of this planet will disappear and only one will remain in which the seed of the Holy Spirit will spring forth as a new life. Mankind will begin a new existence united by a single doctrine, a single language and the same bond of peace and brotherhood. 54. How far you are from the time in which you lived under natural law carrying in your consciousness the voice of the Lord, who said to the first, Increase and multiply, fill the earth. 55. Now spirituality will make you return to simplicity and naturalness, but carrying light in your spirit that through the long journey you have collected. 56. The light of consciousness that illuminated the first step of man and accompanied him through roads and paths, along peaks and abysses, will make you return to the beginning of the path. Consciousness is never lost because it is my own light. Did you ever hear her say to you, Kill your brother? Who ordered you to ignore the father who begot you or the mother who conceived you? Did you hear that she advised you to take the forbidden? No, my children, a good guide, counselor and judge has been consciousness because I am in consciousness. 57. That is why I have always told you that wherever you are you have me with you. I am omnipresent. Do you look for me in objects made by your hands? Why do you have to penetrate certain places to say, here is the Lord, because this is His house, when you know that I am universal. Why do you allow yourselves to be dazzled with feasts and ornaments if you know that in the splendor of nature and in the inner sanctuary of your spirit I inhabit and I manifest myself? 58. Study my teaching as good disciples and in your spirit there will be more light. 59. While my word descends day after day among you, in some faith is kindled and in others the doubt. Some make amending purposes and others doubt if it will really be I who limit myself in this word, to believe and regenerate. They feel the desire to contemplate me to believe in me and stop tormenting themselves, 
but not seeing me with their material eyes, they look for spiritual and supernatural phenomena to ignite their faith. 60. Others close their eyes trying to penetrate the invisible to contemplate my face and in their effort they have arrived to tire. But when his tired mind has penetrated into sleep, his spirit being elevated in the spaces, I have descended to. Converse with them, give them my teaching and ignite their faith. Upon waking up from that deep sleep, both the spirit and the body have felt renewed and have contemplated life illuminated by a new light. Then you vaguely remember your dream and say, I dreamed of Jesus. Has the master really been with me? 61. Truly I tell you, the spirit has many eyes to contemplate me. Recognize this gift and develop it, because through it the word of God will be fulfilled. That prophet who said, that the time would come when humanity would have prophetic visions and dreams. 62. I also say to you, study these lessons well so that you do not go looking for the false prophets and seers of this world and in them you believe. 63. At all times I have prepared your spirit so that it communicates directly with me and in this third era should have already reached a great elevation. If that had been when I came in spirit you would not have doubted nor would you have wanted to touch me with your hands. 64. When I talk to you about the early days, many of you understand nothing because you have not even read the scriptures. 65. I am manifesting my third teaching since the year 1866 and everything being predicted. Many of you have doubted, some out of ignorance and others out of confusion due to misinterpretations. So now that I have prepared the room and the table for you to come and eat the delicacy of eternal life, I have found you unprepared and I have had to manifest myself with infinite patience waiting for your elevation and your awakening. 66. Regenerate, put aside your religious fanaticism, stop being hypocritical and selfish and you will feel like new beings. Then you will not have to wonder if it will be I who descends among you, because the clarity of your heart will let your spirit feel my presence. Faith is one of the greatest virtues, attain it. 67. You are at every moment before the blind, before the paralyzed, before the hopeless. You have to heal them with your faith and ignite the light in the hearts of your brothers. 68. Among you there are already examples of what you can achieve with your faith in me. There are many testimonies of the wonders that with faith you can achieve. 69. Do not let 1950 surprise you weak in your faith because great will be your tribulation, because you will feel like orphans. 70. Today I appear before the walkers to teach them the true path. I do not stop to judge if his clothes are regal or miserable, but to search his heart for a sanctuary. 71. To those who are falling overcome by fatigue, I help them get up and make them understand that when they have blasphemed, they have rejected my strength and my light. 72. Pray that your spirits do not falter in trials because in an instant of violence you can blind yourself and lose how much you have in your spirit. 73. Now you will be able to realize why humanity has been shedding everything that made it great and elevated spiritually. 74. I have come to meet you, because I have seen you close to falling into the abyss, ready to ask that your days were shortened, but when you heard my word you woke up understanding that you will have to dwell on earth until the moment marked by my divinity. 75. To prove to you that your spiritual gifts are with you again, I have told you. Extend your hands in my name when the elements are unleashed and you will see that they obey you. 76. Those wonders will increase your faith and when you least think about it, you will have become my peasants. So you will receive deeper lessons from your master so that you can achieve great preparation and know how to receive those who will come to test you and those who will want to destroy you. 77. If you truly know how to bear witness to my word, you will see many of your brothers glorify me by fulfilling the precept that tells you, love one another. My peace be with you.